Max, I've been exploring how understanding human cognition, both anthropologically and psychologically, sociologically, affects the development of culture. But a question I want to put to you goes to the next step. As we develop AI at human level intelligences and beyond, how do you think that it will affect the, the human culture, human civilization? Yeah. With all due respect, I actually really don't like to ask how will our culture be affected, what will happen with AI, and because it, it makes it sound like we are some kind of pathetic passive bystanders mm -hmm. just sitting here waiting for this future to happen to us, when in fact AI is something that we build ourselves and we can shape and decide. I, so I'm actually, if you permit me, <laughs> change the question to how do we want AI to affect human okay, culture. Okay, and, and I'm going to allow that, but, but I also want to say, how could? So, we'll deal with want. Perfect. If you promise me, you'll also deal with could. Well, let's start with could then, because that's <laughs> really the game changer here. In the past, when we were sitting around in the Stone Age with our rocks and sticks, you know, there wasn't very much we could do. We were not, we were going to die at a fairly early age of an infectious disease or maybe starve to death. And, we were never going to leave this planet or do any. And, and gradually, we've realized that we had really underestimated our ability in terms of what we could do. Science and technology has empowered us to be able to do so much more if we wanted to. Right? We already live much longer, healthier lives, and can travel across the planet and learn things about the micro world and, and, the, micro, and the cosmos. And, and um, AI takes that to a whole new level. You know, we used to think that if you want to travel, spread light far into the cosmos, you have to wait maybe tens of thousands of years for humans to figure out how to do it. Or if you want to live for 300 years, you have to spend, it's going to take way longer than a lifetime to solve all this. Because we always thought we needed to use human intelligence to figure these things out. If we can succeed in building AI, we can do everything we can do. We can bring all, all those coulds, you know, all these science fiction sounding futures much closer to the present, probably to our own lifetime even. And um, I find that to be a very empowering thought. It, it's much more inspiring to think about your utopia, how you would like life to really be, if it's not just in the abstract, but if you realize that this might actually be something that we could attain in our lifetime. And um, I, for one, feel that um, however, you, whatever you want exactly for, for society and so on, that in the cosmic perspective, it would be really lame if Earth life just stays on Earth forever when we have hundreds of billions of solar systems in our galaxy and, and, and beyond. And um, I hope one day um, our universe will be much more alive than it is today, teeming with life that we have helped spread. And, um, Rather than, and if the, all of that life were AI life that humans, at, at some far long ago time created, uh, does that satisfy your um, your desire? It depends. If uh, we flunked our attempts to uh, figure out what consciousness is, and in, in inadvertently just built a bunch of zombie robots to do cool looking stuff, but there's no one home experiencing this whole thing, I think it's. Play for empty benches, <laughs> the ultimate zombie apocalypse, really, a waste of space, the whole thing. Uh, on the other hand, um, if they have very So the only value mind, you think is consciousness? You absolutely. I, I think the only possible foundation you can have for morality lies in conscious experience. Why are we against torture? Because it creates negative experience. Why do we want to help people? because we want to create more positive experiences. I, I use experience as a synonym for consciousness, and so, which means that if there's no experience, yeah, yeah. there is no joy, there is no beauty, there is no meaning or purpose to everything. So a universe um, uh, teeming with von Neumann probes uh, that are not conscious, uh, it w w would be a uh, would, w would be a waste. Yes, there would be no no beauty if because beauty is an experience. There would be no joy because joy is an experience. 
Uh, and it, it doesn't even have to be just AI life. You know, we used to think it was hopeless to send humans to the Andromeda galaxy, let alone another solar system near yeah. ours. But it's not at all impossible with AI. You know, you can email your DNA. It's only two gigabytes <laughs> and make and then have, with the help of, of some for Norman probes, you know, whatever, have a baby <laughs> copy of you. Or pretty soon you might be able to scan your brain and email the full 100 terabytes that is your actual mind and, and have a, a, a you and arrive at the Andromeda galaxy. It's, that's a much better way to do it than to, email, than to send some meat bag that's cryo-suspended for <laughs> three million years and then accidentally collides with a piece of space junk before landing. <laughs>